Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the important course policies and procedures that are laid out in our syllabus. Now, I know when you've taken a class face-to-face, -face, you know that the first day of class, the teacher usually spends a fair amount of time, potentially even the entire class period, discussing the syllabus, going over it, and that's because there is a lot of really useful and important information in there. So I won't be going over the entire syllabus word for word, and I certainly won't take an entire class period amount of time, but I will be spending a fair amount of time on this, so uh, just bear with me as I know it's not the most exciting content. So at the top of the screen, I've got, or top of the document rather, I have just the standard information about me, where my office is located, um, my phone number, email, and my office hours. So I am located in the Henderson campus, C building, room 100A, if you wanted to meet with me in person. And the times that are listed there at the bottom for office hours are when I'm regularly in my office just waiting for students to come by. And if you wanted to see me face to face, and those would be great times to do so, we can also meet by appointment if those times don't work for you. So for course description, just I'll just put this in my own words. When I teach this course, I frame it and teach it in terms of what I call best practices. And what is a best practice? Well, public speaking is a very old art form. It's been around for thousands of years. And over those thousands of years, people, practitioners of public speaking have come to understand that there are certain techniques and practices that are well received most of the time by most audiences. So that's what a best practice is. It's a strategy, a technique, a practice that is well received by most audiences most of the time. Now, if you take an advanced public speaking course, you can learn sort of more radical tactics or more experimental tactics to use when you speak. Um, but for this introduction course, we're looking at the sort of standard best practices. So for example, hand gestures when you speak are a best practice because through tons and tons of research, audience feedback, studies, things like that, it, data consistently shows that most audience members enjoy most of the time seeing speakers who use their hands when they talk. So that's a best practice. There are of course exceptions to best practices. There's always gonna be some people who fall outside of it so that, for example, there would be some audience members who don't like hand gestures or think they're distracting, um, but by and large, most audience members do. So that's what I'm teaching you in this course, and that's what I'm measuring your success on, is how well you achieve, demonstrate those best practices in your speech. Now, for course rationale, this is a bit long, and I really encourage you to read it on your own because I do believe in it, but for course rationale, why is this course important? Why do you have to take it? Most students take public speaking, well, one, because it's required in most colleges and universities. Two, students usually take it because they find it to be something that's going to help them in the job market, which it will. But a larger reason and sort of more historical background is we live in a democratic society, and it's important and it's necessary, rather, in a democratic society to have well-educated citizens who can speak their mind, who can articulate their values and beliefs, because that's how the people's interest is represented in a democracy. You get, enough, get together enough citizens who feel a certain way, and then those citizens persuade their elected representatives to create policy that mirrors those beliefs. So the first step, though, in that process is having citizens, individuals, people like you enroll in this course who can express themselves in an articulate, 
persuasive and ethical manner. So public speaking is vital to a free and open society, a democratic society. And that's an important one to remember. I think we kind of forget about it and kind of focus it all on job skills. Okay, student learning objectives. These six objectives were determined by the College of Southern Nevada as well as the Department of Communication Studies. And these are, this is our promise to you, what you will walk away from this course having learned, assuming you complete all the assignments in a satisfactory manner. Every assignment that I assign in this course will line up to one of these, if not several, of these student learning objectives. All right, next thing I want to talk about is how to communicate with me in this online course. Since we're not seeing each other face to face and all of our communication is going to be mediated through technology, it's important to follow this communication flow in order for me to respond to you and your peers in an efficient manner. So there's three different ways that we can communicate in this course. There's the Common Course Questions, or CCQ. There's Canvas email or messaging. And then there's Assignment Submission Comments. For Common Course Questions, CCQ, this is something that you will post in the discussion board of Canvas. And I'll show you how to locate that in an upcoming video. But think of CCQs as a question that is a general question, a question that other audience or students might have, and is general and about the course. It's nothing personal. It's not just about you specifically in your grade or your topic or something like that. It's a general course question. And you should think about when you post these questions in the discussion board that everybody can read them and that everybody can read my response to that question. So think about as if you were raising your hand in a traditional class and everybody could hear your question and everyone could hear my response. The benefit of the CCQ discussion board is that other students in the class may have had that same question as you. And so when you ask it and then I answer it, Potentially, we just helped out several other students with that same question. Even if you don't have a question yourself to ask, I do encourage students to check the CCQ periodically, at least once a week, because there may be questions that you didn't even know you needed to know, and somebody else has asked this question, and then it was very useful to you having read the answer that I provided. So that's for non-personal general questions. If you do have a personal question, moving on to the second way to communicate with me, then you would, you would send that question to me or that comment to me through Canvas messaging or Canvas email, whatever you want to call it. So if you had a personal question about um, your speech topic for speech two, you know, you were kind of confused or troubled and you didn't know if your topic was was going to work or you were struggling with the topic, something like that, you know, that doesn't really concern the other students. So that's something that you would message me privately about through Canvas. And then finally, comments, which are comments are available on submitted assignments. You would comment on an assignment if you'd already submitted it and you had some sort of question or comment about, about the assignment or the submission process having already submitted it. So let's see, say for example, that you submitted a speech and I graded it and I posted your score to Canvas and you realize that I did my math wrong when I added up the score and there is an error in the grade. That would be something you would, you would under that assignment, you would go to the comment section and you would put a comment there and then I would respond to you in that comment section as well. So those are the three different ways to communicate with me. Course, common course questions, Canvas email, comments. If you ask me a, a general question in a personal email, then I'll respond back. You need to post this in the CCQ because other students may have the same question. And you might find that annoying or harsh, but I'm doing this 
for your sake and mine and the, the other students. It's just going to be more efficient if we do it this way. Regarding communication, I will log in to our Canvas course every Monday through Thursday. I'll also answer all emails within 24 hours except on weekends and holidays. And even then, I still, there's a good chance I'll respond, but I'm not beholden to respond is what I'm saying um, on a weekend or a holiday. If you're the kind of student who submits work early, that's fine. You can submit early work, but just know that I'm not going to grade it any faster if you submit it early. I'll still probably wait for the deadline, and then I will start grading everybody's. That's just the most efficient way for me to grade. Having said that, I usually complete all grading. Generally speaking, I get work back to students one week after it's due. Um, I will ha sometimes occasionally I might wait it might take me two weeks but that's really doesn't happen very often if at all but my promise to you is that I will have it returned to you two weeks after the due date at the latest okay materials what do you need for this class well you need a textbook so the name of our textbook is public speaking the evolving art it's the fourth edition and shouldn't say CSN custom impact. Uh, it is written by Stephanie Koopman and James Lowell and you can get it in our bookstore. You can probably find it elsewhere online and that's fine with me but keep in mind like how long is it going to take to ship. We have our first quiz due at the end of our first week of class so you know if there's going to be a lag time there for you with getting the textbook then you're going to have to take the loss there for that first quiz, all right? However, it's $62.50 at the CSN bookstore. And there's also in the one that you buy at the bookstore, it's going to come with an electronic component. Um, basically, it gives you access to the ebook, which is the same as a regular hard copy. And it also gives you access to some additional electronic resources like sample speeches. There's some videos in there, stuff like that. Um, it's not a requirement. It is useful, though, so you can make that choice. Um, there's, if you get the electronic resource, you're going to need to register to sort of access it, and this is the link right here that you'll need to access it. So that is our textbook, and I know that in some classes the teacher will assign a textbook and you never use it, and you feel like, wow, I just wasted $65. Uh, that's not the case with this class. We're going to use the textbook. You're going to need it if you want to do well in the class. We quit. I take. I give quizzes after each chapter that we read from the textbook. So it is something that we use. In addition to the textbook, you'll need a computer to complete this course, which I think is pretty obvious, but it's important to say. You need to have consistent access to a computer. So. If, you know, you have access to a computer, but it's, you can't get to it regularly, or you have to drive to get to it, something like that, you know, that's not going to be good for this class. It also needs to have reliable internet connection at a, at a high speed. These are the... Following the following are the browsers that Canvas, which is the interface that we use for our online course, uh, supports. So make sure that whatever internet you're using, or sorry, browser you're using, excuse me, is located on here. Having said that, going back to computers, I would avoid using your cell phone as a way to, to complete this course. I would not consider a cell phone a reliable um, computer for this online course. Canvas isn't designed for cell phones. I know there's an app and they're improving it, you know, they're always kind of improving it, but my experience with students using their app is that it doesn't always work, assignments don't submit properly, they can't view documents, things like that. So if you're ever encountering a problem on Canvas and you're using an, a phone, that's going to be the first thing that you want to change, a switch to a, a computer. 
You also need video recording equipment because you are going to submit, record and submit speeches that you had to record. So most smartphones that have come out within the past couple years have pretty good recording uh, technology and makes it easy for you to seamlessly upload those videos that you take with your smartphone to YouTube. That's also another way, another technology piece that we're using this class is YouTube. So if you don't have a, a relatively recent smartphone, maybe you have a really old one or no smartphone at all, then you need to have some sort of video recording equipment to take care of that piece. Skills for this course, what do you need to succeed in this course? Well, you know, you don't have to be a computer genius, but you need to be able to figure out the online component of this class. I do a very thorough job of making the instructions clear on how to go about uh, uploading things, accessing documents, things like that. But as far as interacting with Canvas and uploading files, downloading files, saving files, using your video recording equipment, things like that, that's stuff that you need to be able to do on your own. I'm not a technology troubleshooter. Um, that's not my expertise. So if you're running into issues on the technology front of this class, then what you want to do is call 651-HELP, H-E-L-P. And that's our uh, help desk through the College of Southern Nevada. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So always call them and they can troubleshoot for you. But I'm not going to be able to troubleshoot these issues. Okay, qualities of successful students. So if you've never taken an online class or maybe you haven't taken a college class or it's been a while since you've been in college, these are things that I find successful students do and you should strive to do them as well. Log into Canvas often and keep up on the work assigning course modules. Students who don't do well in this class, it's because they get behind on their work. Okay, because they, they're not forced to come to class every day or every other day. They, they can get behind on their assignments. I can see the last time that you logged into Canvas. So I'm going to tell if you haven't logged in in three weeks or four weeks. That's going to be very obvious to me. And it's not going to do you well in terms of being successful just because there's a really good chance you're going to get behind on stuff. So I would say you should be logging in and doing work on this class um, definitely every week. I would say probably every other day, you know, just as if it was a, a twice a week class. Um, the specifics of that are up to you. I'm not going to micromanage that too much, but you don't want to be going a whole week without getting to this class. Know what's the information on the syllabus? Syllabus. Ask questions, follow directions. This is important. I give really detailed instructions in my course, my video lectures, in my assignment prompts. I'm very, very detailed. And if you're the kind of student who's not going to complete the whole lecture video because you don't think you need to know the information or you got the general idea, that's not going to work well for you and you're going to miss some sort of detail and that's probably going to end up affecting your score somehow. Know your rubrics. I always, I always post a rubric for every speech, major speech assignment that we have. Be familiar with that rubric. Make sure you understand what each quality is that I'm looking for. If you're reading through the rubric and you read, you know, one of the qualities that I've broken down and scored and you're like, I don't even know what that is then that's indication that you've missed something and that you want to ask a question or you want to go back and ask yourself, well, did I skip a video? Did I not look at that thing? Because these rubrics are exactly what I'm grading you on. 
write your speeches well in advance of the due date. Just sort of as a related aside, the speeches outlines, so the written speech component, is always due on a Monday, and then the speech is due the following Friday. So you have four days in between when the outline or the, the content of the speech is due and when you have to record and upload the speech. So I would still encourage you to write it even earlier than that. But remember, you can't start rehearsing your speech. You can't give a good speech unless you've rehearsed the content. You can't start writing the content until, so you can't start rehearsing the content until you've written it. And writing the speech itself does take some time, especially in our second and third speech where you need to do research. So you don't want to wait till the very, very last minute to write the speech or to rehearse it, deliver it, that sort of thing. Do not wait until the last minute to complete your graded work. You know, if you, I, I sort of think about this is that you have all the time in the world to complete these assignments because they're ready for you. So if you have something due on a Friday and you've known it's been due and you've had access to it for weeks and weeks and you think, okay, I'm going to go to work on Friday, I get done at 11, I'm going to get home and then I'm going to finish that quiz because it's due at 11.59. Well, if you get held up at work or you have to work overtime or, I don't know, maybe there's some bad traffic at 11.30 p.m. at night, who knows, and that precludes you from getting to complete the assignment, I'm not going to have that much sympathy for you because you waited so long and so near to the due date before you completed it. Same thing, if you run into an internet issue or somehow your browser isn't working and you waited till the very last minute to complete an assignment, you know, it makes it harder for me to want to accommodate you in that regard. So try to avoid waiting for the, the very deadline because it's just sort of inviting problems. Perform consistently. So don't be spotty in how you approach the course. Just be consistent in committing to it. Um, you know, study. Watch the video lectures from start to finish. Complete all activities and exercises in earnest. Sometimes I will, when I'm doing a video lecture, I'll say pause the video and now go do this exercise, do this thing, come back once you've completed it, unpause the video. You know, don't be tempted to just, oh, I'm not going to do the exercise, it's fine. You know, I get it. Just just do the exercise, okay? Come, come do all the things that I ask you to do. Okay, what I've listed next are the major assignments for this course. Now, the biggest chunk of points here and our course, let me just scroll down here, is worth 880 points total. So almost 500 of those points are your speeches and your outlines. You have three speeches in this course. An in, uh, introduction speech is the first one. The second speech is an informative. The third speech is a persuasive. For each speech, you're going to obviously record the speech and submit that, and I'll grade that. You're also going to submit a few days before you record and upload the speech, your speech outline. And the outline, which I'll get more into detail on this later, it's full sentence and full content of what you plan to say in the speech. I know sometimes people hear the word outline and they think, oh, that's just a shorthand. It's just, you know, a couple words here and there. Not really. For this class, the outline is pretty close to word for word what you would hope to say in a perfect, perfect speech scenario. So you're going to create one of these outlines for each speech and you're also going to submit your topic for each speech as well. Okay, other assignments besides speeches and outlines, we have a set of tests and quizzes, and that makes up the second largest portion of your grade. So like I said, I quiz you after every 
chapter that you read in the textbook. So there's actually a total of 14 quizzes that you'll take in the class, but I will drop the lowest score that you have on those quizzes. So really what that comes out to up here is you are graded on 13 quizzes and they're 16 points each. So, you know, if something happens and you can't take a quiz or you just do horribly on one, I like to have this policy where I drop the lowest score because it just sort of helps everyone to relax, okay? Um, and Canvas will automatically drop the lowest score as you go. So it'll keep updating and dropping that lowest lowest score. So it should happen automatically. You don't have to wait till the end of the semester to see which score it dropped. And then in addition to the quizzes, you take a final exam at the end of the semester. And the final is just uh, word for word, the same, the same questions on the quiz, not all of them, but a selection of them. And it's just, again, on in, in the final exam form. So it's a super easy final. And if you study the quizzes, you will do great on it. And then we had just have some other, you know, couple random assignments here or there um, that you will see as we move through the modules. The grade scale. A, A is top row, B is this row, and so on and so on. Here I have a little bit more detail of the assignments. Going back to the speeches, whenever I assign a new speech, I'll always post to Canvas a sort of general written prompt explaining what I'm looking for in the speech. Now this is general, it's a, it's a page or two long. Then right after that, I'll also post a very detailed video lecture of what I expect in your speech. So this video lecture is going to be longer and more detailed than the assignment prompt. As I said, I'll always post a rubric, and then I also always post high-quality sample speech outlines from former students. So if you're, you're hearing my v lecture video and you're thinking like, well, okay, I hear what you're saying, but how is it actually going to look? Then I always provide sample student work that you can sort of, you know, model yours after if you like. I want you to make it your own, but some students really do benefit from looking at an example or a model. Okay. Put right here, makeup speeches are not guaranteed. If you are late on a speech submission deadline for whatever reason, then you need to provide me with documentation of whatever it is that caused you to miss your deadline. Now, I get to be the I get to decide if that reason is compelling. Ultimately, it's my decision as to whether I want you to be able to to allow you to submit it late. But I will ask for documentation, so be ready for that. This is the speech outlines, which I pretty much already covered this, but do read through it. Quizzes. I talked about. One other note on quizzes is I'm going to require you when you take the quiz and the final for that matter to use a particular web browser. It's called Respondus Lockdown Browser and this web browser makes it so that you can only have one window open at a time and it also will stop you from being able to have other applications open. So it's meant to uh, lessen the possibility of students cheating by googling answers or, I don't know, doing whatever creative thing you're going to do with your computer. So you won't be able to take the quiz if you use a regular web browser. You have to download Respondus and you have to use Respondus when you are taking your quizzes. The easiest way to access, download, and install Canvas is to attempt to take a quiz using a normal web browser like Chrome or Firefox or whatever. And you'll log into Canvas, you'll click to take a quiz, and it's going to say, you can't take, it's going to stop you and say, stop, you can't keep going, you need to download Respondus and take the quiz that way.
And when it gives you that message, it'll provide a link for you to download the web browser. And it's safe to download. CSN monitors it. You're not going to get a virus or anything like that. I also post um, detailed instructions of how to do this on Canvas, but that's the sort of overview. Okay. Other assignments that we're going to do, student lingo workshops. We're going to do two of these. Student lingos are a series of video tutorials that CSN subscribes to, and they take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. They're, they're pretty good. Uh, the technology is good on them. They're well done, uh, highly produced videos. So we're going to have two student lingo tutorials this semester that you'll be scored on. And I list them, the names of them right here. Okay, speech assignment rules. I'm going to go over these in detail in a video. You can read them here again. Um, but the one that I want to reiterate here, if you missed it, um, is that you have to have nine audience members who are in the eighth grade or above for each of your speeches in order for me to score it. If you have fewer than nine people or, I don't know, somehow you deviate from that, then you're going to get a zero on the speech. And there's no contesting this. There's no way around it. It's not even my decision. It's people above me's decision. So that is, that's a must. Course policies, I'm going to let you read through most of these on your own. This one on academic honesty, just important to say, you know, you do your own work in this course. Don't copy paste things from the internet without citing sources. Don't um, buy a paper online or speech online. Don't, do not submit work or portions of work that you've generated in another class. I don't allow that. It is a form of plagiarism. Don't do it. I the reason I have you submit that outline to Canvas of your for your speech is because one of the reasons is because I I do run the speech through a website called turnitin.com and turnitin.com will sort of counter check what you've submitted to me with all the stuff that's on the internet and it'll be able to tell give generate a report for me if you've cut and pasted stuff it'll tell me exactly where it came from and how much of it's cut and pasted so don't do that okay I'm just scrolling through here to make sure I didn't miss anything important so yeah that pretty much covers it for everything that I wanted to talk about in a little bit more detail for the syllabus, do read through this on your own. There is going to be a quiz that you're going to take on the syllabus when you're done with this video. And so do complete that quiz when you're ready. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next video.